Hey guys, Chris here with the good old gamer. So I finally got my new all AMD build finally complete. Just a couple weeks ago, I got in my RX 580 and the system is now up and running. And I found a few things kind of interesting since I haven't had a AMD GPU in a, quite a little while. There have been some significant changes to the overall software from AMD that have given me some serious quality of life changes that I think have been really, really nice. And I wanted to share those with you guys here today. So first off, let's go over some of the key specs. Ryzen 1600X. ASRock E350 Pro 4M. Radeon RX 580 Nitro 2. Now those are the main components to the system. However, if you want a full list of all the components I'm using, they will be linked in the description below. And if you guys are interested in picking any of those up, you can go ahead and click on the affiliate links there. Now, starting up the new AMD software, first thing that catches your eye is the fact that it's full of ads. Well, welcome to the future. Everything has ads on it. But for the most part, they're typically for games or products that may or may not interest people, but you can pretty much just ignore this. So you have a bunch of different options up here, up top. You have the Relive, which this isn't new. I've messed around with this. This is basically the same thing as NVIDIA Shadowplay, and it works pretty much identically. You can change your settings. You can figure out if you want to add in a video capture, what microphone you want to use, things like that. So this is a pretty full-featured set of options here to allow you to set up whatever type of recording you want to do. And of course, you can set up separate options for recording, streaming, overlays. I mean, this is all stuff that you can go ahead and tweak and adjust. The first thing that I did is because I'm using two different displays and they are completely different. I have the Acer KG251Q. This is a FreeSync monitor. So I wanted to make sure that that was enabled as well as the Asus VG248, which is a 144 Hertz non-adaptive sync monitor. And obviously that's not supported. So I wanted to make sure that the monitor that does have FreeSync can have it on and the one that doesn't well, doesn't. So it was really nice that you can have each display do it independently since, well, you know, you may want to game at 144 hertz and sometimes you might want to take advantage of FreeSync. Next thing I popped on is I like the virtual super resolution. So I made sure that was on both of them. So this way, if I do want to go ahead and test games at higher resolutions, I can do that very easily. GPU scaling, I always keep on. It just makes things simpler. Everything seems to work better and it fills up your screen, especially if you're playing games like four x three games. This will keep them in four x three instead of trying to stretch it, which most panels try to do natively. Of course, if you need to create custom resolutions, you can go ahead and do that as well. Now, none of these features are new or crazy or off the wall, but I found it really nice that you can have FreeSync and non-FreeSync displays connected at the same time, and the FreeSync will enable if you're gaming on that display. Now, the gaming tab is really where the meat and potatoes has changed. Now, this looks basically identical to how it used to just a couple years ago or a year and a half ago, the last time I had a Radeon card, uh, but they go ahead and they auto-populate with all the games that are on your system. Now, I have a lot of games through GOG, G-O-G, and uh, it would pick up like DOS games and whatnot. So I actually had to clear a lot of them out and manually add some in. So that might be some maintenance that you may need to do if you're like me and you like to keep things clean and streamlined. But speaking of clean and streamlined, the global settings really make things very easy. So what I did in here is I actually set the texture filtering to high, left tessellation on the AMD optimized, let AMD figure out what's best for the game. Same thing with the shader cache. Made sure I turned on triple buffering for OpenGL. If I do want to put on some sort of V-Sync or whatnot, I'd rather it be triple buffered. And then this is the big one right here, is the Enhanced Sync. Now, this is very similar to NVIDIA's Fast Sync technology, to where the games will run as fast as possible and then sync to your monitor. So this is really handy for a lower refresh monitor like the KG251 that I'm using right here because it's only 75 hertz but I don't feel the impact of using the lower refresh monitor near as much because of this setting right here. And then another big feature that has changed is Radeon Chill now works on pretty much all games. I'm going to put a little caveat in that in just a little bit, but it works on the vast majority of games. And by default it is on, and then the Chill hotkey 
is F11. So you can turn it on and off within the game and so you can actually see the difference in performance in real time. You can also use the frame rate target control, but I've actually never really had that work out very well for me. In reality, using chill is actually more beneficial than using the frame rate target control. Now to go ahead and enable uh, Radeon Chill, you actually have to go into the game profile and check it on individually. Now while it's on globally overall, you have to set it manually on each game because this way you can kind of customize it how you want. Now I have a 40 to 75 hertz free sync range on this monitor, so I wanted to test kind of the lower end. I actually originally ran Crisis 3 with 40 and then I have it go up to 144 hertz. Now with the enhanced sync, that means the game will pretty much cap at 144, and in reality, that's fast enough as far as response on a game like this really needs to go for me. But like I said, I tried it at 40, and that just wasn't quite good enough. Even with free sync, it didn't feel smooth enough. However, at 50, the frame rate felt very, very fluid, and I really didn't notice any major issues with playing at a 50 frame per second target with adaptive sync. That's really the caveat there, because if you're not using FreeSync or G-Sync, playing at 50 frames per second is not ideal. There'd be a lot of screen tearing, and if you're running at some sort of V-Sync, uh, you'll actually have a 33 millisecond response time on your controls, and that's not good either. Now in the game, you have basically all the same settings that you have on Global. You can change it on a per game basis if you wanted to. For example, if the Enhanced Sync isn't working out so good, you can change that. Uh, if you want to go ahead and up the anti-aliasing, if the game doesn't have any, you can do that as well. Personally, I like just leaving texture filtering on high, so this way if a game only offers, let's say, 8 times AF, this will override it and bump it up to 16 times. Now there's tons of other features in here, but those are the big ones that I really wanted to highlight because just going ahead and setting the global settings that way and playing my games, everything looked, ran, and felt amazing and required very little effort on my part for tweaking of any kind. The games just ran and they ran well. Now the Radeon Chill is something that I think actually needs to be demonstrated. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some gameplay here. Alrighty, so as you guys can see, the game is being limited to 50 frames per second. I have the Chill bar starting at 50 and going up to 144 frames per second. As you can see up in the corner there, we're only drawing 93 watts of power. This makes the GPU extremely energy efficient. Now, as soon as I start moving around a little bit, that frame rate goes up and the power consumption goes up. And that's exactly how chill works. And what's really nice is you just go ahead and you play your game and when it needs the higher frame rate, it kicks in. Now, if you guys are noticing, we're kind of stuck around the 75 frame per second mark for the most part. It doesn't go all the way up to the 144 and I'm not entirely sure if that's because the software determines it's not necessary or if it's because I only have a 75 hertz uh, free sync display and maybe that's part of the limitations there. But it does go above a little bit and with the enhanced sync, we don't have any screen tearing still. And the free sync works beautifully. Now with just the press of the F11 key, I don't know if you guys can hear that. I'm not sure if that's gonna come through or not but that's toggling the uh, Radeon Chill on and off. So right now we're playing with it off and you can see the frame rate just goes back up into the regular territory. Now, once again, I still have the enhanced sync on, so I'm not getting any screen tearing. And with free sync, I'm getting buttery smooth playback here. But the big thing is, as you can see, the power consumption jumps up pretty considerably closer to the 149, 150 watt, which is the TDP for the card. And those power savings features that you're getting, that will add up over time. See, we're dropped, now we're under 100 or about 100 watts being drawn for the GPU. I mean, 50 watts over an extended period of time will eventually add up to real world money. Well, alrighty guys, there you go. I just wanted to highlight some of the new features that I've seen in the AMD software since the last time I've had a Radeon card. This is something that not a lot of people really discuss as these quality of life features may seem minor, but they're really nice and really handy to have. Uh, I mean, basically I just set the enhanced sync on, set up my free sync, and then just set the texture filtering to maximum, 
and just played my games and everything runs extremely, extremely smooth. Like I mentioned in the last videos where I was talking about FreeSync and G-Sync, Adaptive Sync is the most beneficial technology any of you guys can invest in. If you're sitting there without some sort of Adaptive Sync technology, I would make that your next upgrade over pretty much anything else as long as you have somewhat decent hardware at this particular point. As the benefit of that is the lower frame rate, you don't really notice it near as much. Uh, like you guys saw, I went ahead and lowered the frame rate all the way down to 50 with uh, Radeon Chill, and you saw how much of a power savings we were getting there. It really saves you money in the long run because your GPU can run a little bit slower when it's not really affecting anything. It cranks up so you don't actually feel it during gameplay, and you can actually tweak the settings to fit your particular style. Perhaps 50 frames per second simply isn't fast enough for you. Maybe 60 will do it. But because it is so customizable to each individual person and on each individual game, you can tailor the experience the way that you want to be more energy efficient, which is more cost efficient, and you don't need to spend as much on GPUs long term because you can get away with something that runs a little bit slower due to the adaptive sync. And that was the main point of the video when I was telling you guys you need free sync or G sync. It really doesn't matter which one you go with. They both work pretty much the same. Uh, visually, you can't really notice too much of a difference. My one recommendation that I would do is I would recommend making sure that you do get an adaptive sync monitor with low frame rate control or LFC. Uh, Acer actually has replaced this monitor. Uh, Hardware Unboxed just today did a video on it. It costs a little bit more, but it's 144 hertz display, but it has LFC. So I'll go ahead and put a link to their video in the description below. Uh, for me, it's worth the extra 50 bucks to go ahead and do that. But this monitor works great. If you're looking for like the most budget build that you can do, this is a $150 24-inch monitor. It looks fantastic. It is TN, so the viewing angles aren't great. But I mean, if you're gaming and you're sitting in front of it, it works extremely well. And I've also been super happy with the Sapphire uh, RX 580 Nitro Plus. That thing is great. I haven't even had to overclock it. I didn't even bother because all the games just run fantastic right out of the box with it. And it runs cool, runs quiet. And like I said, with the Radeon Chill, I mean, there's plenty of extra headroom there for you to crank up details and everything else and still keep, you know, that power draw to an absolute minimum because we're basically running into GTX 1050 Ti power consumptions using an RX 480 or 580 rather. Sorry, they are the same. So I get them mixed up in my head sometimes. And then as far as the CPU goes, I had the Ryzen system last year. The 1600X does extremely well. Obviously, today, if you guys were going to buy one, I would recommend going with the 2600X. Or realistically, I strongly recommend the 2700X if you're looking for a long-term CPU. As 8 cores and 16 threads is going to be the next mainstream you know, CPU that's going to replace the 4 core 8 thread for the long term. And you just won't need to upgrade for a long time there. Well, alrighty, guys, I hope you found this helpful. This is a different kind of video. This is just more of a, hey, this is cool stuff. Uh, maybe you didn't realize it. Maybe you even have a Radeon card and you didn't really tweak it or check anything out in there. Uh, but these are settings and features that you get for free. They work extremely well. I've had no problems with them. And uh, yeah, I love it. You know, just set a few settings in global and I just play my games. It leaves tweaking to a minimum. You just set, you know, high or ultra, and, and then there you go, and you're done. Well, alrighty, guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. And if you guys do need any hardware, please click the affiliate links in the description below. You guys can pick up the same kit that I have here. Most of this stuff I would consider best bang for the buck. Uh, like I said, the 1600X I got before the new series, so I would go with a 2700 or a 2600X, either one of those nowadays. But the AB... Uh, 350 Pro 4M from ASRock is definitely the best bang for the buck AMD motherboard out there. That's the reason why I got it. I picked it up for about 60 bucks. You just can't beat it. Well, alrighty, guys, that's all I have for today. I'll catch you guys in the next video.